So Ola is in huge legal trouble right now. Welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and specifically, 72 Ola drivers had filed a complaint against Ola Fleet Technologies, which is a subsidiary of Ola Cabs, the parent company in the city of Lucknow. And now that complaint has actually turned into a case that's being heard by the Allahabad High Court. So to understand this issue fully, let's go back to 2015, when in India, the cab hailing industry was growing like crazy at a rate of 20% per annum. And at that time, Ola and Uber were competing aggressively with each other to sign more and more drivers, and they both had hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank to fight this battle against each other. So it was around this time that Ola had a light bulb moment. They realized how they could increase the number of their own cars on the road. And to do this, they started a subsidiary company called Ola Fleet Technologies. And under this company, they leased out cars to drivers and promised them that if they followed certain conditions, they would become owners of these cars in four years. So what were those conditions? Well, firstly, drivers had to pay a partially refundable security deposit of between 20,000 and 30,000 rupees. Secondly, they had to pay a daily rental fee of between 750 and 1,150 rupees. And then thirdly, they had to sign a contract stating that they weren't gonna work with any competing companies like, for example, Uber during that span of time, those four years until they fully owned the vehicle. And on paper, this plan seemed to be bulletproof, but as soon as they started implementing it, cracks began to appear. The first major flaw was that purchasing cars ended up being more expensive than Ola had anticipated, and so they weren't actually able to offset the cost of this with what drivers were paying them in terms of daily rent. And then the second major flaw, and I don't blame Ola for this, was that their plan wasn't COVID-19 proof, which means that when the pandemic hit, their drivers weren't able to pay them the rental money. Let's take a look at this chart real quick because I think that it really helps to illustrate the impact that COVID-19 had on Ola's fleet business. So this is Ola's revenue in the financial year of 2020, 541 crore rupees. Now, notice how much smaller it gets when we look at the financial year of 2021. It shrunk by 90% to just 38 crore rupees, which of course means that net losses increased as well. You can see here in the financial year of 2021 that Ola burned through 686 crore rupees. Now, this is the part of the story where things start to take a bit of an ugly turn because by this point, management over at Ola had realized that this leasing business was impossible to revive. Ola had given their drivers four years to pay off these cars. That was the length of the leasing period. And so once that period was over and drivers couldn't pay the money back because of course the COVID-19 pandemic had robbed them of the ability to earn money through Ola during the height of the pandemic, the first wave and then the second wave, Ola started taking their cars away from drivers. And in some cases, allegedly, the company took cars back even before the end of the four-year period. And so what we have here is a situation where there's tons of these drivers who are feeling cheated. They feel that Ola lied to them at the beginning of those four years, saying that if you just give us four years of your professional career, if you drive with us full-time for four years, then you'll be able to pay off these cars, no problem. And so that's what these drivers did. They gave their time, their energy, their blood, sweat, and tears to this company, and then at the end of the four years, instead of owning a vehicle, Ola took the vehicle back. And I would love to share Ola's opinions, their thoughts, their statements on this issue, but so far, they've actually been silent. They haven't said anything about this situation up until this point when I'm filming this video on Thursday, the 11th of August. All right, next up, let's move on to our Startup Spotlight now. Yes, Startup Spotlight, we're gonna be changing the segment from Founder Spotlight over to Startup Spotlight, just because we found that when we were focusing on these founders, what we ended up talking more about was the startups that they founded and were running. So that's what we're gonna be doing moving forward. And this week, I wanted to highlight Upgrad because they've raised almost a quarter of a billion dollars, $210 million to be precise, and they're profitable. So earlier, Upgrad had announced that they were gonna be hiring 3,000 new employees in the next three months. And so it's very likely that a large portion of this $210 million is gonna be used to fund that hiring spree. But how are they able to raise $210 million during this funding window? Winter, and especially when ed tech startups are at an all-time low in terms of investor interest. Well, one of the reasons that we've theorized here at Backstage with Millionaires is that unlike a lot of other ed tech startups that focus on TAM, 
that's total addressable market as a top priority, it seems like Upgrad has mainly prioritized profitability. If we look at Upgrad's earnings for the financial year of 2022, they had year-on-year growth of 150% in their revenue, and their gross margins remained as high as 70%. The result of this is that they became profitable in the last quarter of that financial year. This says to me that EdTech in India is not dead, despite what a lot of people seem to think, and that with a sustainable business model, there are ample opportunities for growth in this industry. All right, next up, Indian startups have made a huge comeback when it comes to funding this week. And so now let's move into our bird's eye segment because at least 12 Indian startups have raised more than a million dollars this week with the total coming in at $397 million. So EdTech, of course, led the charge this week. 53% of the funds were raised by Upgrad. That's $210 million. Then after EdTech, we have SaaS startups raising 31% of all the funds. That's $122 million being raised by the likes of Clever. Tap, which raised $105 million, and Squadstack, which raised $17.5 million. Then we have one startup in the fintech space raising 4% of all the funds, that's $15 million being raised by Jodo. And then finally, we have the D2C space and one eyewear company in particular, Lenscart, raising 3% of all the funds, that's $12.5 million. And then this week, we also have one honorable mention, Orxa Energies. We talked about them in our top 10 Made in India EV two-wheeler startups video, and they raised an un disclosed amount of funding, and they're going to be using these funds to bring their EV bike Mantis to market. Now, if we look at the last couple of weeks here, we can see that $397 million is a very good amount of money for Indian startups to have raised. It's more than double what Indian startups raised last week, $185 million. And I'm recording this video on Thursday, but by the time we publish this video on Saturday morning, that number will probably have gone up past $400 million. Now, obviously, the number that you're seeing on your screen right now, $300 and $97 million is reflective of the funds that Indian startups had raised by Thursday of this week. But if you want a more up-to-date look at the funds that Indian startups are raising every single week, then make sure to sign up for our newsletter. You can find the link to that in the pinned comment down below. All right, next up, just a couple of quick updates for you guys. First of all, OYO is expanding in Europe. So specifically, they've announced their acquisition of Danish vacation home company, and I'm going to butcher this, Bormholske Ferihuse. Earlier this year in 2022, they acquired another European company called Direct Booker. So it seems like Oyo is really going to be focusing on Europe moving forward. All right, next up, another Indian startup, MSwipe, has received their payment aggregator license from the RBI. First, you had Razorpay, then Pine Labs, then Innovati, and now finally MSwipe. Now, MSwipe is a mobile point of sale network provider for merchants, and its target market is mainly MSMEs in India. Currently, they're enabling these MSMEs to accept payments from smartphones and feature phones. And now with this payment aggregator license, they're going to be building an in-house online payment gateway, which will be able to offer full stack payment solutions to offline and online merchants. All right, next up, there's something that I did not tell you guys about. And this isn't something that I wanted to draw attention to because I didn't want anybody to worry about me. But now that it's over, I think that it's safe to say that back in June of 2022, I was in the hospital. So the reason I was in the hospital was I had to get an emergency surgery done to remove my appendix. It's called an appendectomy. And I went into the ER with pretty acute pain. I didn't know what was causing it. I ended up getting a couple of scans done. And then the doctor told me that if I didn't get a surgery right away, my appendix might burst. So I got the surgery done, obviously. And then I spent two nights in the hospital recovering. And I'm a pretty healthy guy. At least I like to think so. I almost never get sick. So this appendix thing wasn't a result of any weird life style choices or pre-existing medical conditions or problems. This just happened out of the blue without any warning whatsoever. I just woke up in the middle of the night. I was sweating like crazy. I was in excruciating pain. But here's the thing. The bill for this unexpected hospital visit was somewhere in the ballpark of one lakh rupees, which is not a small amount of money, at least not for me. But guess what? I had health insurance. So I ended up paying for the cab ride to and from the hospital. That's it. Now, I sincerely hope that none of you guys watching this video right now end up in the hospital for any reason in the near future, whether it's taking care of somebody that you care about a lot, or if it's something that's happening in your own body, it's not a fun experience. I don't know if you, how many of you guys have been in the hospital, but trust me, I now know this firsthand, it's rough. 
But if you do end up in the hospital, and specifically if it's for something that's happening in your body, I genuinely hope that you have health insurance. And I don't know if you guys can tell where I'm going with this, but this video is brought to you by Ditto Insurance, a new age insurance platform for millennials. Now, right off the bat, I wanna be totally clear here that a consultation with Ditto is completely free. It's not gonna cost you anything to go to their website and just take a look at what they've got on offer, or you could even speak directly with a Ditto advisor, and they're gonna give you totally spam-free advice. That's actually one of their biggest USPs, their unique selling points. Other companies, you call them, they get their number, and then they'll never leave you alone, but Ditto isn't like that. In fact, they guarantee a spam-free experience. And when you call them on the phone or message them on WhatsApp, you're not dealing with a salesperson. You're chatting with an expert, an advisor, someone who can give you information, but isn't going to pressure you into buying something that you're not ready to buy. And I know that that's hard to believe, but trust me, I right now am being more pushy than anybody that you're going to meet at Ditto because I actually think that you should get health insurance. Like, I, this is off script, but even if you meet me on the side of the road, if you see me in Bengaluru and I look like this, I will still tell you without any hesitation that you should get health insurance because you never know when your appendix or any other part of your body is going to start acting up. So if you don't already have health insurance or you're not satisfied with your current health care provider, then make sure to click on the link in the description down below and head over to Ditto Insurance's website. And nobody's going to try to force you to buy something that you're not ready to buy, but you can talk to one of their advisors, they'll walk you through their policies, and they'll help you to pick the plan that's right for you. All right, next up, I wanted to take this opportunity to say a big thanks to someone on our team who came onto Backstage with Millionaires back in January of 2022. We had no idea what he had in store for us. He's had a huge hand in upgrading the visuals here at Backstage with Millionaires. A lot of the innovations that you've seen on screen have been thanks to him over the last couple of months. And now he's going off into the world to do bigger and better things. So he's no longer gonna be with us here at Backstage with Millionaires. But I wanted to say goodbye and I wanted to say thanks for all of the innovations that he's brought. For example, the bird's eye segment, all of those beautiful charts that you guys see, that was all him. Basically, the prettiest part of any of our content was created by Sudhanshu. Also, before he came onto the team, we really had no experience when it came to creating short form content, but he led the charge. He blazed a completely new trail and actually our most viewed piece of content is a short that he created himself. So anyways, I wanted to say farewell, Sudhanshu. We wish you all the best in your future pursuits. And I know that you're going to be a huge success in whatever you try to do. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned a lot from it. Big thanks now to all of our Backstage with Millionaires members, our unicorns, our decacorns, and our hectacorns. And of course, also big thanks to this week's sponsor, Ditto Insurance. And remember guys, you can find the link to their website in the description down below in case you don't already have health insurance or you're not satisfied with your current health insurance provider. All right, I will see you in the next one.